Welcome to the Crossroads Psychology video podcast. I'm Vojko Mihnia, signing in from Beijing. In this episode, we will talk about knife training, knife combat, and self-defense. I'm joined today by Matei Florin. Matei Florin is the CEO and Chief Instructor at Tactical Combat System, a school of combat and survival that offers tactical training to civilians and to private and national security forces. He has nine years experience as an operator in a police tactical unit in his home country, Romania, and background in close quarter battles, high risk arrests, and dignitary close protection. He is trained to intervene in high risk events such as hostage and barricade situations. He has been on anti-piracy missions in high risk zones such as the coast of Somalia, Nigeria and the Gulf of Eden between Yemen and Somalia and Somaliland. As a former private military contractor, he is an expert in tactics of modern combat, knife combat and knife throwing and close quarter combat among other martial arts and survival skills. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Mikna, and thank you very much for having me to your podcast. It's a pleasure. It is, it is a pleasure to finally meet you live. And I want to share with the audience how we actually met because we've never met before, right? I bumped onto one of your videos on Facebook. And to be honest, and I did not share this with you in our, you know, pre-interview chat. I thought that your video was on high speed. So it was you training in the forest with at the, at the tree. And I'm like, all these moves you were doing. And then I realized that that was the speed of your training. So I said, let me check you out. Yeah, uh, the majority of people that they are seeing the first time the videos, uh, they are having the same idea, like you say. And many times that the video I'm putting there, the video speed is not changed. So people to understand that uh, is the real speed. There is no doubt that you have experienced violence in your career, in your life, at a level that most people, most civilians will never do. So how has that shaped you being in a high risk environment, having to deal as a job with violence? It's true, having a direct contact with the violence in my past jobs and the experience that I have, uh, we're changing uh, a lot of things, uh, and especially when we talk about the mindset, yeah, the combat mindset. Uh, and not only this, but also in the way in which I plan my daily schedule, yeah, from when we talk, of course, about personal protection or self-protection. So uh, I think the most important thing that I was able to, uh, to achieve is not to achieve because all of us uh, has this uh, uh, skill inside, but to sharpen it, it's uh, awareness, to be able to identify potential threats. This is the most thing, uh, important thing that we have in us, not only us like humans, but also if you look in the animal world, they are having this instinct to uh, catch and to see the predator or, or the danger. But because of the modern society, because of the technology, and this world in which we live now, this skill is not uh, so much at the same level like our ancestors. So this is one of the most important things that was changing at me. Another thing is the idea or, of uh, planify and be able to make scenarios in my mind that are helping me to prevent them or to have a good uh, programming of the brain how to react in that moment. Yeah? So, for example, when I'm training, let's say not only knife combat, but also fire weapons and other stuff, I'm uh, making different kind of scenarios. And by making these scenarios, the brain is programmed to have a response in that moment when you will be in a real situation. Yeah. So if, uh, okay, we must not go in the other direction of being paranoid. Yeah. Uh, so it's an uh, equilibrium between the, the, the both. Also, when I'm talking about tactics or, um, training methods, I'm able to identify stuff that I'm seeing and I can implement in my training that they are good or things that they are bad. So I know when I'm seeing some uh, dude, some guy, instructor teaching something, if that will be 
apply in a real situation or no, because there are also a lot of uh, things that they are going like an art, but it's not going like reality. So for sure, a lot of things were changing in my uh, in my personality and in my way of processing the information. I find it very interesting what you said that as someone who was exposed to violence, you are able to identify threats almost like a second nature. Do you think that us civilians kind of or lost or we don't have this ability because we're very like safe in our urban environment? What do you think? Are we la- are civilians lacking the ability to recognize threat? So I'm sure that all the civilians have this uh, ability to recognize the threat, only that is not so sharp in. So the idea of how you can see this, for example, imagine that you are going on the on the um, uh, dark alley to your car, yeah, and you hear steps behind you or running somebody. Immedi- in, immediately, your mind, your uh, body will enter in a state that it's making you look to see what is happening because it can be a threat. So this is a, a, a good example to show that all we have this, yeah, this is uh, to everyone, only that by training, by having different kind of, expo- uh, of exposure to violence, it will be more sharp, this kind of skill. Right, I totally agree. And I hope we can get into some practical tips towards the end of, uh, of our interview. But I do believe that training, any kind of martial art training, builds your, your awareness apart from obviously confidence, skills, and, you know, physical strength. So let's talk about your school, Tactical Combat System, and your project, School of Survival, which I find very, very interesting. Uh, What is it, and who is it for? So uh, Tactical Combat System, uh, TGS, uh, on the short uh, acronyms, it's uh, a concept that I uh, was uh, forming in 2014, and uh, it's combining hand-to-hand combat, fire weapons tactics, blades combat, and tactical medicine. So it's a complex system uh, that uh, I created in such a way to give knowledge not only to uh, civilians that for sure they need it, but has also a part that is adapted for the military, uh, law enforcement, and uh, security personnel, yeah? So it's split it in two. It's for the law enforcement and military, but also for the civilians. Who can make uh, this and for who it is this uh, TGS tactical combat system? For all the persons that are uh, acknowledge the violence that are around them and they want to have the knowledge to protect their lives, the family members or the community. So basically from 2014, I was making a lot of seminars in many countries in Europe, teaching the tactical combat system, Italy, Romania, uh, Ukraine, United Kingdom, Austria, so Czech Republic. So from that uh, moment when I start and I uh, formed this kind of uh, system, I was having a lot of people that they were coming, uh, calling me to come to teach at their seminars because they find that a very unique way and more uh, adaptable to the modern combat, yeah? More modern way of thinking and fighting, yeah? And I think even the way you call it, school of survival, is like so important. It doesn't mean that you have to learn uh, how to fight or how to uh, be an aggressor. On the contrary, it's about protecting yourself, about surviving in, in tough situations. You also do some medical training, which I find fascinating. So I think the civilian population does need more awareness to the fact that there is a world out there that can hurt you, right? Yeah, I always uh, explain to to my students and tell them that in the moment in in which you understand that from the beginning of humankind, violence is part of our history, then you will also understand that you must learn to defend yourself and to learn how to fight against this violence, how to protect, how to react in these moments. So this is the number one thing that you must understand. You look at our history and you'll see that bad people always exist. So if you want to protect your family, if you want to protect your community, if you want to protect your own life, you must have the training. 
And training is not enough to be able to fire, to shoot with a fire weapon. Yeah? Okay, I'm good to shoot with a fire weapon, but if tomorrow I'm in a situation in which I must use my fire weapon or my uh, knife, because we talk about knife to defend uh, the civilians, but in this time the aggressor was uh, stabbing multiple victims, yeah, and I eliminate the target, or the target is uh, neutralized, but the people near me are dying because I don't know to use a tourniquet, for example, a control medical device to control their catastrophic bleeding. What was the idea that I was eliminating the target if my family is dying near me? So it's a complex system. You must learn more things so you can say that you can protect really your life or the ones near you. Wow. I think the two of us have so much to talk about and I think you have so much knowledge that we can share. But now that we have some background, I want us to be very practical in our discussion. Because one of the missions here at Crossroads Psychology is to take technical and theoretical concepts and see how they actually apply in real life. Because it's not like in the movies, it's not like right. reading a novel, it's not like watching a training video, right? There has to be a practical element to, to combat, to survival skills. So I want us to focus today specifically on knife combat and knife training. And maybe some other time, if both of us agree, we can talk about some other issues, right? But for starters, for sure. can you give me one or two situations where you actually had to engage in a knife fight? And I want to say this because I'm a civilian and apart from using a knife in the kitchen and on a few occasions a wooden knife in training I was never actually engaged in a knife fight and although I might know a few offensive or defensive moves I think in a real life situation things are very different and you have I think quite a lot of experience so can you share with us a few situations I will try to, uh, uh, first of all, this uh, thing, it's one of the main uh, questions that I am asked uh, by people to share of my experience. And here, when we talk about knife, of course, this question is coming very often. Uh, I will uh, tell you uh, a situation that I was involved in, in an uh, urban area, in city, not in the missions, not in anti-piracy. It was in uh, my free day in the civilian, uh, in my civilian time. To resume the story, I was with a member of my family uh, walking on the street. It's uh, not a very populated area uh, where I was walking. And uh, to one moment, uh, we must uh, make the corner, like enter one, an alley. And immediately in two meters, we face uh, three persons. That uh, one of them was entering uh, very aggressively with the shoulder on uh, in, in me, yeah? like instigating, when it's happening, these kind of things, because of the brain is processing the information very fast, the adrenaline is rushing in your body. It's happening something in your, uh, in your, with your body and with your mind that things are getting more slower, like time. One of these guys was entering uh, very aggressively in me. I was not knowing the intent. I was not having either so much time to make immediately, like to uh, make space between me I only pushed the other member of the family, it was a, a woman, and I pushed them a, a little bit uh, more far from the hotspot. And uh, there I was seeing him putting fast his hands, in the one of his hands in his pocket. And because of this that I say to identify the threat, to identify in my, uh, in my mind when I see somebody, when I'm in a conflict and I see somebody fast putting his hand in the pocket, it's already a process, the information that you want to take something from there. And for sure, you don't want to give me a flower. For sure, it will be a weapon, yeah? So uh, because of my uh, training for many years, I was able to deploy my knife more, much faster than him, even if it was a reaction. Normally, in a real situation, the reaction is lower than the action. Yeah? But after the brain is processing the information, I was very fast able to deploy my weapon. And because I was seeing him already, it was like in the same time, the both. But because I was seeing already putting the knife, like want to stab, 
I was making only a lateral step and I stabbed him uh, at the level of the, the hand. Not because uh, I was wanted with precision, because in that moment are happening a lot of things, yeah. Yeah, we'll discuss also, I will tell you more about this with the precision and other, other things. And the fight was, in, in that moment, I create space and the fight was from, from this contact was being in a verbal fight. So this guy, the psychological effect that the knife was having, the idea that I was deploying very fast the knife, the idea that he was feeling, it was not so profound deep after how I feel at the, 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 the penetration. But the effect that was having on him, like I was fast to deploy the weapon and also feel it on his skin, on his uh, muscle, this was creating this uh, uh, psychological effect of, of the knife. So nobody, even me, if I have a guy with a knife in front and I have the chances, I will go away, I will not stay, stay there to fight. If I must, if I can run, I will run, if I have the possibility. Yeah. But this was uh, something that was happening very close and very fast. And this... And especially that I was with somebody else, I was not having the chance to run. I cannot let my family member near me to let there and me to run. So it's more complex, the situation. But this was uh, uh, transforming in a verbal confrontation and the both party was, the parties were going in the opposite direction and only verbal things. This was a very uh, happy case because in a knife fight, doesn't matter who you are, not, doesn't matter how good you are. Uh, chances all the time are that you can die. Uh, this I teach all the time, yeah? Training is helping you. Logical. You must train more and more. If I was not training, maybe I was uh, lying in front of the priest, yeah? At the horizontal. But this was the situation, and it was a happy ending situation, yeah? It was finishing in a good way. I, yeah, it's, it's just, it gives me the goosebumps, even just by listening to you. But I, I think you made a very good point here, which the audience has to understand that. And I love the way you said it very, very fast. If you have the chance to run away from a fight and not have to engage and even more deploy a, a weapon or a knife, you would do that, right? Correctly. And this I teach also to my students is the most important thing that people must understand that knife when a weapon is involved, it's not movies, it's not cool you. Exactly. You can die there. So I prefer to be in the in the in the minds of this aggressor, for example, to be a coward and sleep good home. Yes. That to be a hero about that. Uh, this moment in which you must analyze and decide what is the best option to do. Okay, if you have this uh, possibility. So here I think it's important to mention that. Before anyone decides to carry a knife, it is very important to do our own research, right? So knife legislation is very specific from country to country and is very different from, from person to person, actually. So before we start our discussion, I want to segue into, into the topic of knife fighting and knife training and knife combat. Let's have some disclaimers, right, that do not right. carry a knife as a civilian in a country where you're not allowed to, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a, a very simple thing and i give you an example. Uh, I am from Romania, you are from Romania. Yeah? There is one legislation, now I'm living in Austria. In Romania you are not allowed that neither to have a folding knife. Yeah, it's, The legislation is not permitting you. In rest, here in Austria you are allowed to have a pocket knife. Yeah? Mm. A not non-automatic folding knife. Yeah? So, there are places and places, and it's very important because this can bring you to the prison, yeah, without any uh, any more talking. Yeah, so it's very important. And if you make it, it's your own choice, and nobody will put your hand. Uh, you know that you cannot say in the front of the judge, "I was not knowing the laws." You are, you must know the laws, even if you don't uh, hear it somewhere. Yeah, it's mandatory that all the civilians are knowing the laws. So don't carry a knife. And if you carry it, you must know that it's your, it's your responsibility. Right, right. So, and I wanted us to make this point here because it's very important people not to just start walking around carrying knives because they watched a YouTube video, right? So I want us to address the issue of using a knife as a defensive mostly, but also as an offensive weapon from several aspects, from several point of views. So we could talk about why knife. 
choice of weapon. We could talk about the skills needed, uh, the training needed, the mindset of using a knife, of having a knife, of carrying a knife, of knowing how to use a knife. I think it's such a huge and important topic. And also, towards the end, let's, let's have some practical advice about real situations. So what do you think about this plan? Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. And they are, uh, they are, how to say, the most important thing that even if you are a beginner and you want to start, you must know all these things to make an idea. Yeah, so it's, it's perfect. Right. So let's start with why use a knife as a defensive weapon. Why a knife? <laughs> there are so many things that I can say here. I can uh, put on the paper uh, hundreds of things, but I will try to resume the most important. Number one can be uh, the knife can be a good option for the people from the for the civilian that they are not uh, allowed to bury uh, weapons. Yeah. So the the local the legislation of the weapons in many countries is very strict. So civilians and fire weapons it's very hard. Yeah. So the knife, it's a very good weapon to have like a second option and first option if you don't have normally the possibility to have a fire uh, weapon uh, of defense. Uh, the second thing that I see at the knife, it's uh, not hard to use. Yeah, You don't need so, uh, uh, I don't know, advanced uh, techniques so you are able to strike with the knife. If I put now to a, to a teenager a knife in the hand or I put to an old uh, um, 76, I don't know, 70 years old uh, uh, man in the knife in the hand, the both have the possibility to kill. Yeah. So it's not so complicated to work. Another thing is that it's easy to conceal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have, I can have a knife like this that is more like my palm. I can catch it here, talk with you. Yeah. Make be, I don't know, aggressive in my move, but have the knife here and ready to use whenever I want without you to notice it. So I have also in my uh, videos, uh, uh, I was making especially a video with dangerous concealed carry. You see people, how easy you can conceal a knife and how, how easy you can be attacked with a knife without you to notice that he has this uh, knife at the, uh, the, them. Uh, another thing, um, because you say that you, you start by seeing my... Uh, my uh, video with throwing the knife and this, many are seeing the knife like a close edge weapon. Yeah, I must be close from my target to operate with the knife. But you can also transform by training the close weapon uh, knife in a projectile weapon by throwing it. Yeah, and if you you already see my video and you know how uh, how powerful these uh, throws can be, and of course. Using this, it's not like in Hollywood movies, like the heroes are throwing with a knife, killing the enemies at 20 meters, 10 meters. This is Hollywood, yeah? In reality, the throwing of the knife is happening very really close distance, yeah? So I, I really liked what you said. And I want again to make a disclaimer. When we talk about knife training and your, your tutorials, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you also want to show the viewers how they can defend themselves against an aggressor. I really enjoyed the video where you concealed your knife in your, in your belt buckle. Like, it's so fast to take out. Like, if I never even thought about it, that you could have a knife in your belt buckle. So, by understanding knife training and knife combat, you also build awareness of how to protect yourself not necessarily to be the aggressor and the attacker. And the other amazing thing that you keep on pointing out in your videos too, knife tr training and knife fighting and combat is not Hollywood. And although okay. actually I was talking to my friends today and I, we, were, we were having dinner and I said, I have to go back. I'm going to have a, a, a podcast with a really cool guy. And by the way, he throws knives at at three branches and he never misses. And I don't know, that's like an amazing skill to have and to know that it's possible. But also it's important to be realistic, right? That Correct. knife knife training and knife fighting is also about co close combat. There are things that can be demonstrated and things that can be applied, yeah? So 
I can make a demonstration also how I throw the knife from uh, 10 meters. But in a real situation, I will never hit uh, a target that has unpredictable movements and is moving continuously. Even if I take a stone and I want to hit you and you are at the 10 meters, you will protect yourself or you will move. So this is the concept why knife throwing is happening in more close distance. And of course, age weapon, when you use the real combat, close combat, it's in very short distance. And of course, how you say it's about not mixing the two. Hollywood is Hollywood. Realistic things are realistic things. Also, when I teach and I make all these drills, sometimes I make like three, four cuts and one throw. In reality, it will not happen. In reality, it's one step and it's finished. Yeah. Right. So you must understand it. It's not a fancy art like with the Escrima, you stay like the musketeers who are staying and it's not existing. This many times you will not be able to see the knife coming. This is the reason why I say that awareness, being able to identify a potential threat is number one thing. And I actually, I really like that. And you, you pointed, you mentioned awareness at the very beginning of this podcast. And I think it seems to be a thread, right? In everything that you say, you keep mentioning awareness, awareness of both uh, the threat and also your your abilities or capabilities of getting out of a situation or of protecting your your person the person that's with you so what are some basic knife skills a civilian should have and i say should have because i do believe that we all should have the ability to protect ourselves and to protect the person we are with especially as men and we should be able to protect our family and most importantly know how to protect the family right because right. we can be overwhelmed by four or five attackers and all the training in the world cannot really save you but to at least right. know and have that little confidence that in a case of a situation i can take care of my wife of my child of my mother and grandmother Right. So, what skills should a civilian have? I will answer to to, to your uh, question with the most important thing from tactical combat system mentality. Yeah, the core elements that even like a beginner, even like an advanced practitioner with a knife, you must have. The number one, we come back again, and it's number one rule: how fast I am able to identify a potential threat. So, awareness. The second one is how fast I can deploy my weapon. Because if I am very good with the knife, I know thousands of techniques, yeah? But in a real situation, I am not able to deploy the knife in time. I will die with all my techniques that I was knowing because I was not able to deploy my knife fast. So this is the second. The third one is how able I am, uh, how, how fast I am able to hit, to strike with the knife. And the fourth one that is coming with the third, how precise. So these are the four elements, doesn't matter, beginner, not beginner, that it are the core elements of the tactical combat system involving knife and not only knife. And for achieving all this, there are all kinds of exercises. And I give you a simple example, maybe we discuss much later more advanced techniques, but a simple example, for example, if you want to achieve precision, yeah, you can, uh, of course, if you are a beginner, a training knife. Like a beginner, never train at the beginning with a real knife because you will cut yourself for sure. Yeah. So a training knife. These are rubber knives or special design knives that are for training. And I can make on the wall a circle, a small circle. And hundreds of times I must hit with uh, the rubber knife there. Or I can draw on the page and put it on the, on the wall. And with a marker, a small circle with a marker all the time to mark in front of in the, this circle yeah so these are uh, precision exercises that can help you increase your precision then there are exercises for uh, fast uh, uh, hitting then there are exercising of deploying your knife but mainly these four things elements that i was saying to you these are the skills that a beginner uh, practitioner must have because we like civilians the majority like civilians don't have time to spend so much years learning uh, a thing that maybe will help them, but when he will know it, it's already maybe tomorrow he needs this. Maybe in one month it will be in a situation. So you need simple and efficient techniques. Right. I want to point out two things that you just mentioned. 
I watched recently your uh, butterfly video. And you were saying that doing all these fancy things with the butterfly knife. And I used to play with the butterfly knife with, with, with my friends when I was, uh, when I was very young. And all we wanted to do was like fancy tricks, right? Totally ineffective in a real, in a real situation. You would lose seconds of very important action or reaction time. So again, knife combat, knife training is not something very fancy but it's very i do believe what you're saying is very very true and correct it's very practical and i also watched again your video where you were doing the um, the knife stab at the wall you had like a blurb of tape and you were doing you were you were stabbing the, the tape right and i tried and it's very difficult to point at the same location again and again fast it requires a lot of coordination and fine motor skills. Yeah, uh, I want to, to say a very important thing. People, uh, if they were not facing violence and they were not uh, in many types of these situations, they don't know that how their body will operate. So it's very important to know also what is happening in your body in a real situation. For example, after the brain is processing the information, and is giving, uh, um, is giving uh, the adrenaline is uh, um, releasing your body and is rushing in your body. The fine motor skills that you have, like the fingers, yeah, they are not operating at the same level. For example, when we say about the uh, butterfly knife, all these movements that you do when you are not stressed and you are home in a real situation, 90% is existing the possibility that you lose the knife down. You understand? Because your fine motor skill will not be the same anymore. But people, they don't know this. They don't know that your breathing is increasing so so uh, high. Your uh, heart beats, your uh, blood is redirecting to the group, um, uh, big muscles uh, groups. And, your hands um, are sweating. Are, yeah, sweating. Yeah, correct. Very good. For sure, you know, because it's uh, also part of uh, your domain. So um, all these things are, are very important to, to know because you can... Uh, imitate in your training this kind of reactions, yeah? For example, if I am making all the time relaxed training, yeah? I'm in a relaxed mode and make this with a knife. It's very good. I will be a master of this skill being home and relaxed. But when I will be in the real situation, something is happening with my body. So I must imitate that situation. For example, how I can make uh, 20 push-ups, 150 meters, how fast I can, my breath is increasing, my, my, uh, my heartbeats are increasing, yeah, and my, my hands are shaking, so I bring a little bit my body close with what is happening with it in that moment. So after I'm making this, I'm trying to make my drills very fast to see how I operated. It will be more difficult. The same with the meteorological condition. If I'm training all the time in a good, beautiful gym, yeah, with warming and this, when I will be needed to use my knife and it will be freezing outside and cold, my fingers will not operate the same. So what, what I can do? I can put, for example, a bucket of ice with water, putting my hands inside two minutes, three minutes until the, I cannot move as very good, and then try to open my folding knife. These are things that people must, it's the stress that you induce into the training in such a way that you can be close to the uh, <coughs> real things that they are happy to reality. And I totally connect with what you're saying. And if we change the word knife to archery, I used to be a competitive archer. And I trained day, every day at a target in my own safety zone at the, at the archery field with my friends around me. And then when competition day comes, it's totally Great. different. Even if it's at home, on my own field, it's a different situation. And what you're saying with like doing push-ups, running 150 meters and, and then practicing your skills, we did that in archery. So we had to run 100 meters, 70 meters, 70 meters back, put on our gear and shoot. And you were already huffing and puffing and it was a totally different thing. And then we did training by time because in archery, there's a certain time you have to uh, shoot your, your arrows in. And during training, you have all the time in the world, right? But when you're under right. pressure, your body behaves differently. You think differently. And that's why I think training is very important 
when we talk about any skill and especially combat training. So where do one start with knife training? Someone who has no experience, where does he or she start? Mikra, we are living in a modern world, so there are existing so much ways now to learn something, yeah? From the solo training to the online training to the physical going to a course, yeah? So uh, you give a search, yeah, to, to, to the internet, and you find so many information about all the domains that you want. The problem with the solo training and with finding these informations is that the majority, 90%, I am speaking about my domain, are trash information. So the other is golden information that you must be able to identify, to extract and implement in your training. So if you are not having uh, direct contact with violence, it's very hard to make this identification. This is the reason why you need somebody to tell you that was passing that road to tell you if this is applying or is not applying to a real situation. If you must spend hours to train that technique, you understand? Yeah. Maybe you spend it, but it will not help. It's the same when we talk about well, when we talk about solo training. I want to give you only the example of, for example, the boxing outlets, the MMA industry, the athletes. Yeah, you see every time one to win without having a coach, coach to win something to be a champion without having a coach. So there, are, it's existing a limit that you can like solo, like alone, the basic, the fundamentals you can learn. And you can improve at very good home, yeah, and alone. But then it's the under the line that you must take connection with somebody that will pass to you his knowledge of years that was investing time in. Yeah. Then it's coming the online training, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree so with you. And, and I'm I'm a big fan of online training, but there are just some very specific skills where you do need a mentor a teacher, an instructor, or even someone who knows more than you, even if that person is not an expert. Yeah. Okay, it's existing also the other type of online training in which you see now with the, this situation, with the pandemic and everything, all the instructors uh, were um, reinventing themselves and giving online courses, the platforms like Zoom or other stuff, they are helping them making online classes. And it's a little bit more good than solo training when you search for information alone because you have the instructor in front of you. Uh, you see him, you can imitate, he can correct you, but still it's not when you go to learn that craft to the teacher. Yeah. It's like wanted to learn, I don't know, sculpturing and you want to send letters to the teacher. Yeah. To send you back what you must do. So all the art. Are, are coming, uh, it's coming a time when you must learn direct, uh, applying, for example, to professional courses. Yeah. I, I say also, uh, last video in my video about, uh, uh, the tactical medicine. You can buy yourself a tourniquet. Yeah. You can have it. You, I can check on internet. I can check. I can learn the te theoretical information how to put this. I can make some practice practical how to put it, but this is not tactical medicine. This is the basic. If I want to do a decompression of a pneumothorax, yeah, uh, just uh, using the kit of the decompression of the pneumothorax uh, um, uh, pressure, that is hard skill. It's uh, tactical medicine that I must go and um, follow a, a professional course with professional people that they are teaching me this. So all the time it's existing this life. And I totally connect with you when you say that learning online is good as a theoretical concept right but sometimes when you want to learn something practical maybe you don't want right. to know all the little details and the history behind it you just want to know the practical stuff because you mentioned time and let's say maybe you just want to have some basic knife training you're not going to study the history of of knife forging right so i think a person who knows uh, who has experience can teach you a few skills, basic, can show you good form, and you can just practice that until you become quite yeah. proficient in, in that skill. Because many times we get drowned in so much information on the internet. And there's even on your channel, there is so much stuff about knife training and knife fighting that I watch maybe 10 or 15 of your videos. And 
every time I'm like, wait, what? I forgot what the skill was in the previous video, right? So there must also be mm -hmm. like a progression. And maybe as a beginner, you don't understand the progression. That is one. And then the yeah. second one, you talk about the tourniquet and a medical, what do you call it? Medical tactical intervention? Tactical medicine. Tactical medicine, uh, it's, uh, it's the civilian medicine and tactical medicine, it was uh, more applied in the military field. Yeah, It's the uh, capability of uh, an individual to uh, keep the victim alive until professional medical care is coming. And here I'm not talking about first aid, CPR, mm -hmm. cardiopulmonary response. I'm talking about trauma, um, tra trauma wounds. Yeah, for example, you were cut with your your artery. Uh, the leg was slashed with a knife by the the adversary or somebody else near you. So for this, you cannot make a CPR. Yeah, you need a tourniquet. You must yeah. control the bleeding. Otherwise, in few minutes, he will lose his uh, a lot of amount of blood and he will die. So these are skills called in tactical medicine. These are skills that people must have, like civilians. And also. These skills, again, I can watch a video, I can read the book, I can learn the steps, but n you, you were never in a situation when there was a bleeding person in front of you and you need to remember all those steps, not to mention to like be drowned in, in blood and let's say in the unfortunate situation where the person that you want to help is someone that you know or that you care about. Like there's so much pressure and outside pressure that comes on to you. So again, just online is not enough. And that's why I want us to focus today on the practical part of, of knife training and not be like, you know, fantasies and Hollywood and you can do this and you get a certificate and you're an expert. Like forget about the certificate. You don't need a certificate. Just know the four basic skills and maybe they can they can have a, a great impact. So yeah. I believe that a whole that a person's whole approach to a situation changes if one has a knife on him or if one knows how to use a knife. Uh, for example, let's say I have some basic knife training, but I don't have a knife on me. Wait, I have some key or I have a pen which can replace a knife. So in, in your experience, is this like a valid point that the knife as a tool, a defensive tool, can be uh, replaced with any other object? You put exactly the point on the right word, calling, it's calling tool. <laughs> because the majority of the people are not understanding this concept. The weapon, it's you, it's your mind. You are the weapon. The other things, fire weapons, uh, knives are tools, tactical pen tools. I use that tool to create space, distance, so I can evade or do other kind of tactics. It's not existing this. I use my tool to stay there to fight with somebody. You understand? In tactical combat system, I don't have the concept fighting with a knife. It's not fighting. I'm using that knife that is my tool only to create space and distance so I can evade or do other tactics. Yeah? So this that you see in the movie, staying there and making 10,000 moves and nobody is cutting a little bit here, a little bit, a little bit here. Again, we come to the same discussion, call you the uh, idea. So yes, if you have the, uh, coming back to your question, if you have advanced training, yeah, and you know, not only advanced training, you can be also a beginner, but if you understand the concept be between, uh, uh, behind this, uh, you will understand that if I have this knife now in my hand, or I have a tactical pen, some of the characteristics and the movements are the same. But I recommend to people, if you know that you will not carry a knife, don't train in your training, for example, doing with the knife slashings, slash to slash, because your brain will learn that movement. And when you will have a tactical pen, you will make automatically the same movements, but only that the tactical pen, does, the pen doesn't have a sharp edge. It's very important to understand that even if you are a beginner, but you understand this concept, how you to use it, you can use also other kind. I, I can be at a restaurant and have a fork. I can be, uh, I'm talking about me or other, but if you understand this concept, only that in your training, you must, not, you must put accent on the 
for example, if I'm talking about tactical pen, of the on the stabbing with the knife, on the penetrating strikes with the knife, not on the slashes, because I will have with me a tactical pen, and the brain is learning, and it's um, it's like programming to act in the real situation automatically by making that move. So you must make this separation between two. And of course, if you are training on this kind, following this line, you will be able to apply, I don't know, being a woman and having this uh, for the nails. Or, okay, now I'm not talking if you have this in your uh, purse with 100 things there, you will not find it, yeah? I'm referring to things that you can find that around you. Yeah. For example, I'm somewhere and I have a, uh, I have a normal pen, yeah, a, a metallic pen, but a normal pen near me. And when I'm writing something, I'm at the office and something is happening. Now somebody is coming aggressive. So I can penetrate soft tissues with that pen, yeah, only to create distance and time so I can evade or do something else. Yeah? So yes, it's applying this uh, kind of mentality. Everything, all the objects, tools. Uh, also, when I'm talking about throwing with a knife, you do, you use that only to create space and distance. This, this is the secret of things. Not staying there and fight. It's not existing. This. Yeah, this is the moment to go back and mention again that where you live is very important to know the legislation. And if you know you yes. cannot carry a knife with a blade with you, but you can carry a tactical pen, then your training makes sense to be as such so that you train more stabbing, uh, more defense, right? Not slashing, as you said. So it seems to me that the fighter, a knife fighter, builds a certain mindset, right? At a beginner level, what changes do you expect a beginner knife student to learn? Something new that they maybe they they did not experience before what kind of mindset shift do you see after training in in knife fighting for 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 a while so, so i want to underline something here because i find this expression uh, but uh, many people civilians but also in the industry of um, of uh, uh, utilizing the knife like a weapon and many instructors are using also this expression uh, knife fighting, it's, in my opinion, it's not on the, my mentality that I say, in, in which, in which, which idea. When you say a fighter, it's somebody that is fighting, yeah? Fighting daily, training daily, and all, all, all things. When you are thinking uh, about a knife fighter, it's like you are imagining this guy every day having fights and stabbing with somebody. So this is a little bit uh, exaggerated. Mm -hmm. We are thinking, like we say, you say earlier, that knife or tactical pen is the tool. So when you have in your mind from the start that you are not a knife fighter because that will kill you, that you are you are the weapon, you are somebody that's a protector, you want to protect your own, your family, your community, your civilians around you, and you use the weapon to achieve something, to create space, to create distance, to, to make something, yeah? Because if you have this mentality like, fighting with a knife, it's also the idea of staying there, losing time and fighting. Yeah? This is dead. Yeah? If you are a, a fixed target and you stay there and you decide that you want to put in application your thousand techniques that you learn, it's a little bit dangerous. Uh, coming to your question, at the beginning, normally, like in all the things that you start, yeah, you must learn the basic. You must learn the fundamentals. Yeah? But that fundamentals must have also a strong pace, like mindset. Because if you are training only your body, but you are not training the mind, it's a little bit complicated when you are being in a real situation because the body is trained, but the mind was not. So when you must stick somebody with a knife in his body, his your mind will have a little bit of problem and it will respond like a blockage. You understand? Because you never been in that situation and you never train either your mind to operate like that. Yeah. So it's easy to say, I will use my knife and cut and step and make all this. But in reality, it's different. So this is the reason why in my training, I put a lot of accent of on uh, training also the mind. And for this, we use uh, visualization techniques. Yeah. So, for example, I am making my drills, my combination with the knife. Yeah. When I make these combinations, I also visualize with my mind how I am 
stabbing the target, how blood is coming out. All these devices will not create criminals. It's not about creating criminals. Criminals, they don't need these techniques. Criminals will kill you or will do something without learning. Yeah, they have this in their nature. We only make a strong mind to understand that this is happening in that moment. So your mind is ready yeah, by this visualization to understand the process be- behind these techniques. It's simple to make it only in the air. But if you don't put your mind a training to visualize all these scenarios, to understand, even to make a training in which you have a piece of meat and you stab that meat, yeah, the sensation that you have, you understand it's different by making it only in air or, I don't know, making only on the tree. So there are different kind of things that if you are doing like this, if you start from the beginning with training the mind, making the mindset, the correct mindset, basic and the, the techniques, of course, they are happening a lot of changes at the level of the brain. But always do not come in the other extreme, do not transform the people in a bad uh, character of their own. You must, in this scenario, see, they must understand that they are making this like a protectors. You are using your knife, not because somebody was giving you two slaps in the traffic or punches two times, you take the knife out and you stab it. You use the knife like it was the situation in Paris with the terrorist attack two years ago when a terrorist was entering with a knife and began to kill multiple victims. That is the moment in which I take my knife out and I eliminate the victim because the, the terrorist, because they must protect my family and the one around me. So using of knife is deadly force. It must be from start understanding. It's a responsibility to have it, and it's a bigger responsibility to use it. Right. Wow. I want to circle back and mention, and I never thought about it the way you put it, that knife fighting, knife fighter is actually not a good way to put it, right? Because you're right. A fighter is someone who trains to fight in an organized manner, right? There's rules, there's this and that. But in a, in a knife fight on the street, there's no one that is actually prepared unless you train for it. And here you mentioned visualization. And again, I can't stop thinking that we did exactly the same training in archery. We were shooting our bows in our head. We were following the moves with no, with no arrow, with no bow and waiting for the arrow to hit the target and visualizing the target. So I do believe that visualization is a huge, is a huge benefit in, and it's a, it's a very good practice. And I think it's almost like a skill to have, to have the ability to understand mentally the process you have to go through to reach a target. And yes, uh, it's, it's a very good point that we, we are making here, deploying a knife is a huge responsibility. Carrying a knife is a huge responsibility. And that's, that's, that's why you picked up on the word tool, right? A tool can also be a defensive weapon and can almost have, can almost have the same effect and the same uh, end, right? Protect yourself, protect your family, or help you get out of a situation. So I do believe through knife training, one develops a mindset where they are ready to enter a more difficult situation. And again, I want to say that I'm saying all this from a very theoretical point of view, because I've never been into a knife fight. I don't plan to get into a knife fight. If I am into a very difficult situation, I plan to protect my family and run away, right? Let's be very straight about it. With all the martial arts that that I have under my belt or that I want to have, being practical is very important. So let's take a situation. I have some knife training. I have a knife for me. I'm in a situation. I I wanted to say I'm in a dark alley, but you already gave that that example. Uh, So I'm in a situation where I can't run away. At the same time, I have to remember that every action that I take will have consequences. Depending on the country you're in, deploying a deadly weapon and creating damage and even death can, can put you in a lot of trouble. 
So having all this in mind, how do I react? What to do? So I, I start with a very fast uh, uh, enumeration of three main aspects. When you are in, facing a knife attack, and I have a knife with me, there are three main situations. Situation number one, I have the time and space to run away, and I am alone. I will run away. Yeah. So I can do this. I make it. Situation number two, I have the uh, space and time to run away, but to make this, I must face the opponent. For example, imagine you are in a room and the door, you must reach the door to escape that room. Yeah? I give a simple example to make. So for that, I must have a direct contact with the aggressor. Short, but only to create space so I can run away. It, I, rep I repeat, I, I, I say it in the simplistic way, only people to make an idea about what I want to say. Yeah. And situation number three, when, for example, you are in an elevator, yeah? You are in an elevator, you cannot run away. You are in a, until the door is open, you are there. Right, yeah? close, close, so close quarters. In a, yeah, or in a close uh, room. So that is the moment in which doesn't matter what you do, you must make whatever you can so you stay alive, yeah? To, to fight to stay alive. Now, coming back to your uh, scenario, this with the running away, it's a very good thing, but also you must understand that depends of your... Uh, physical capability. If I am a supraponderal guy that has 120 kilos and my my aggressor has 50 kilos, where I run? It's catching me in three meters. Yeah. If I have my baby with me or my child, I have two children, how I run? And also my wife. They will catch you and stab you. So there are different there are different scenarios in, in which you can make this if you are alone or something or I don't know. In scenarios in which you cannot, and in the scenario that we say you cannot run away, but you have the knife. And uh, here it's, you know, <sighs> how to say, there are some instructors, it's all, all, all the time a um, uh, very controversial thing when we talk about this, because there are some instructors, I don't want to say names, I don't want, uh, everyone is with his teaching, I am teaching what I am teaching, that are teaching their students that when you are in a knife attack situation, you deploy your weapon, but you try only to cut his wrist or his arms, you know, to not in, uh, inflict him deadly wounds. But this, again, we enter in this Hollywood uh, arena in which people don't understand that the knife attack, when you have a massive guy, 100 kilo, that is coming violently and fast. Imagine me, but a little bit more slower, to not put that as an expert, that is coming very fast with different kind of angles and strikes, and you have the adrenaline and fear in the children's and other things, like you say, you are in this situation. The idea that you cut the wrist or the arms, it's a little bit ridiculous, yeah? So uh, we must understand that when you use the knife, when you take it out, you cannot say to the judge, I was wanted to cut also only his wrists, because he will say, who is your lawyer? Uh, understand? So you already take the knife, you already use it. So you must have two things in your mind when it's already coming to a fight with a knife, you decide to use it so to take it out and to use it already all it's over, yeah? So you have two options to protect and your family to be alive, yeah? And the other guy that was attacking to be dead, yeah? Or to have this freezing moment in you say, I don't take the knife out because I will go to prison and all of you will be dead, yeah? So this is a, a, a very difficult situation and it's requiring a, a very powerful mindset yeah, to make the decision if it's time to use the knife. Of course, if the other guy doesn't have the knife out, yeah, I'm trying all the methods to mitigate the, 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 the conflict verbally and to try to protect, like you say, I try to protect my family and to try to mitigate to be between me and the aggressor or the multiple aggressor in such a way that I can mitigate the, how to say, to to de-escalate uh, de uh, the conflict. If it's re already passing to the physical taking of the knife, doesn't matter what is happening. I don't use my bare hands against the knife because this is another Hollywood scene. Yeah, When you have multiple aggressors with weapons, I'm taking my hands and I'm uh, an expert, uh, Steven Segal and other stuff, and I catch him by the wrist. I know I do also Aikido. I was doing a long time ago, and I respect Jiu-Jitsu, other martial arts, yeah? And I respect it's an art. There are things that can can work and things that they cannot work. Yeah. We, when you have multiple aggressors and you have a knife attack and they have weapons, this is nothing. So I will deploy my knife and I prefer to be in front of 
uh, a judge giving explanation because they're protecting my family than to be in front of the police. Yeah. So this is the idea. It's a very complicated thing. This is the reason why I say using of the knife, it's deadly force and it must be uh, taken out and used only in these extreme scenarios, terrorist attack. People that are already coming with a knife and stab, if it wants to stab you and you are with the family and you want to protect and all these things. Yeah. So we must make the separation between the two. Wow. Uh, I was not expecting this, uh, this answer, to be honest, but I can pick up on a few things. And one of them, I didn't even think about it, is that you're right, not every, everyone is in, in peak physical condition, right? Because usually we associate with people who have similar interests, right? I reach out to you because I find what you're doing fascinating, that I'm passionate about martial arts. By, by chance, both of us did Aikido. So we're always physically fit. And also archery, not that this is a professional, I am an amateur one, I have an Recuve uh, art uh, bow. There you go. So see how we are attracted by people who have similar opinions and similar uh, interests like us. But you're right. Others do are not physically fit. And maybe this is also a nice reminder that before we even think of knife training and knife combat and protecting our family, we should make sure that we are physically fit to be able to protect ourselves, our family. And I love, I really love it the way you say protect your com community. Like, I think that comes from your background as a former uh, special uh, ops uh, police officer and from your work where you have this ethos of helping the community, right? Maybe my circle, my, my, my thinking is more narrow as in like, I want to make sure I protect my myself, my, my family, my immediate loved ones. And my baby is two months old tomorrow. And like my biggest fear right now, thank you. My biggest fear right now in, in life is that I won't be able to protect him when he is still not able to defend himself. And I actually talked to my wife about, you know, if we are in a situation on the street where I must take very extreme action, I told her that regardless of the consequences, they come first as my priority. And I would take all the actions necessary to make sure they are, you know, protected, safe, okay. they escape the situation. And my wife was saying like, oh, you think too much about it. But maybe this is us, you know, thinking about scenarios that, Maybe they will never happen. But again, having the mindset that, oh, I already practiced this in my head at least. I know what I'm going to do. And I know what, what's going to happen, right? You know the old saying, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than to be a gardener in a war. There you go. Right, right. Wow, there's, I, I really hope that we're going to have more time in the future to, to continue our chat, maybe on, on different topics. But you know what? I'm taking the knife away from this conversation. And, you know, we talk about knife training and uh, carrying a concealed weapon. But let's be honest, not always we can do that, right? So yeah. what do we do? What are some practical tips? Let's say three practical tips for someone who is in a hot situation on the street but does not have, uh, let's not connect it to a knife. Let's not connect it to a knife fight. And before you say anything, I want to say tip number one, make sure you are physically fit and ready to protect yourself and protect your family. I think before anything else, if you can't run 100 meters very fast, I'm sorry, get your game together. So give me three tips for any civilian Who's in a situation? How do they? How should they, you know, protect themselves? No, no knives, no weapons, nothing, and they can't run away. All right. So this is number one: run away, but they cannot run away. Yeah. So and number two is is coming in the idea to be aware. Yeah, to be able to identify things. So very important until 
these three tips, you say that you cannot run away, okay? But very important, I come again to the same word, number one, awareness. To be all the time able to identify things. Even if I am in that hot spot, I must be very aware about what my target, what my uh, aggressors or potential aggressors are doing. Yeah, uh, You must have, number one tip, you must have always in your mind that people are carrying weapons. Especially bad guys are carrying weapons. So when you have this in your mind, your approach to this, it will be different, totally different. You will not try to close the distance because if I have a knife, this is what I want to you to do, to close the distance because you are in, my, in the range of the weapon. So have in mind always that people are carrying weapons and especially bad guys are carrying weapons. Have the respect of a weapon, yeah? Understand what this is mean, what is this, it's, how bad situation it can be if this other person is taking out the knife and it's ready to use it, yeah? So when you have this uh, mentality, you know also to keep uh, uh, the distance. Distance, I'm not referring 50 meters, I'm referring to be a small distance between uh, you and the aggressor. Second, try to identify at you or around you possible tools that you can, can use like a weapon, yeah? Maybe I have my bag, maybe I have the telephone, the telephone I can use it to throw it, you know, to, only to distract the small attention and to run away. Maybe I have, I don't know, uh, a tactical pen, maybe I have, I don't know what at me, yeah, that I can use or around me, maybe I'm at the desk office, maybe I am at the restaurant, I can take a ashray and smash it in the head only to create this um, uh, time and space so I can do other things. Yeah? This in the idea that all it's it's becoming already an aggression. Yeah. So when they start already the uh, the aggression, yeah? aggression. And this uh, starting the aggression it doesn't. Uh, I don't refer to the idea that he must touch you physically. Yeah. Because it's too late. If you already come near you, catch you by the the t-shirt. There are two guys. There are three guys. You are already in a bad situation. Yeah? So aggression means also when it's entering in your personal uh, place. All the time, have your hands up. Even if you are in a not combat position, do not to show to the witnesses that you are not fighting, or to the CCTV cameras, or uh, to the uh, aggressor, to since they to identify you like you are a victim and you complain, you 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 you, you will make what they want. Yeah, you are not a uh, uh, fighter. Yeah, it's. They must uh, see you like uh, a target, yeah, like a victim, because when you want to surprise them, you cannot surprise them if I already stay in a fighting war. Mm. They know already this guy wants to fight, so I take the knife and I stab him, or I do something else. So even if I am in a non-fighting stanza, my hands are up, because if I am with the hands down, not the KO, it's yours, yeah. The reaction is more slower than the action. If there are multiple aggressors and you have one here, the peripheric view will not see so good how this guy and fast it will smash your uh, face or hitting you and give you the KO. Yeah? But if you aim up, even if I don't want to fight, I am able from here to do a cover or to do something else to not take, for example, we talk about hand-to-hand -hand combat, to not take the first punches, yeah? This uh, KO strike, yeah? That is very important. And here, I am coming a little bit on your domain of the psychology. You must uh, this is exactly like in the animal world. You must show to these predators, in this case, because they are more predators, and you cannot make like this directly because you will have some problems. They are three and maybe also with weapons. You must give them the wrong impression that you are the victim. You are the, also in the animal world, the, the, the smallest one is going down and be like a victim. Only that you do this only to relax them. You relax their, they already see, ah, oh, this guy cannot fight. It's already scared, but I'm using this strategy only for a fraction of a second so I can make my reaction. This is valuable information, valuable tips, and I think anyone with or without training can apply. Thank you so much for your time and for your knowledge and for sharing all these tips with, uh, with me and with our audience. And I really, really hope that we do an interview in the future again and we talk about other topics thank you very much uh, for having me in your podcast uh, Mikna. and for sure i am all the time uh, 
when you want, we'll make other kind of things because I like this kind of conversation. This kind of podcast are uh, giving something to the people. They can learn something, and of course, we can learn also one of each other different kind of things. This is the idea that is making us more stronger, like men, so like protectors that they want to defend their families and their uh, own life. And I also think that it's important to send out a message that we must be aware of our environment and we must be prepared both mentally and physically to protect ourselves, to protect our family. And you keep saying protect our community. And if we have that ability to protect our community, more more power to us. But totally, we should be able to take care of our own, right? When we talk about community, I'm talking about uh, if you imagine a scenario, if you are in a looting uh, type of scenario, mm -hmm. there, how it was in the USA, yeah, what it was happening. I, we don't talk politics or other stuff, but I only want to give you a scenario. You can protect your family or can have some provision for yourself, for your family, for a small amount of time. You have some skills that they are, how to say, they are limited. But when the communities, when you find other people that they like the same things like you like, that they have the same mentality, that they have the warrior spirit inside, that they have the protector spirit uh, inside them, then you get together and you know when you will face a big threat like this, how it was there, right? I don't know, it can be a catastrophical thing. Yeah. You know that you have a good guys, a good community there form that together will permit you to survive or to be better, to adapt better to that situation. This is brilliant. Thank you so much. Until next time. Thank you very much. Thank, good, you, thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah. And I hope everyone enjoyed this podcast. And I'm really interested to know what are your opinions? What do you think? Do you think knife training, knife combat, survival skills are important for you, for your family, for your community? And how do you approach it? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you don't want to miss the next episode, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, this is Vojko Michnia signing off from Beijing. Goodbye.